Hello and welcome. I'm Amrita Anshurai and you're watching Law of the Land on Raj Sabha TV. Today we bring to you the enforcement of security interest and recovery of debt laws amendment bill which seeks to allow securitization and reconstruction of bad loans of banks. To discuss the issue, I have with me Mr. Rajesh Mohan Sinha, advocate and Shekhar V, senior advocate. Now for the headlines. The bill provides for conversion of any part of debt into shares of a borrower company. The bill proposes to make registration of transaction of securitization mandatory. And the bill includes multi-state cooperative banks within the definition of banks. Now even they will be able to recover bad debts. The enforcement of security interest and recovery of debt laws amendment bill provides for conversion of any part of debt into shares of a borrower company and such conversion will be deemed to be valid. As of now, the reconstruction companies or securitization companies do not have the facility to convert their debt into equity in cases of business reconstruction or rehabilitation. According to the data available with the Reserve Bank of India, the total worth of bad loan assets with banks is over 40 lakh crore rupees. If this value can be unlocked, it has the potential to sustain India's budget needs for next three years. Well, that is why the government intends to empower the reconstruction and securitization of companies. The bill amends the securitization and reconstruction of financial assets and Enforcement of Security Interest Act and Recovery of Debts due to Banks and Financial Institutions Act to strengthen the regulatory and institutional framework related to the recovery of debts. By uh, enacting this particular amendment, the borrower's rights have been uh, taken away. See, in 90% cases, what they have provided, the uh, borrower is supposed to file, borrower can file a caveat before the uh, DRT, DRT, and the caveater has a limited role. The bill proposes to include multi-state cooperative banks within the definition of the banks. The bill proposes to empower banks to accept immovable properties as securities in case where there is no buyer available for its purchase. Banks can convert debts into shares of a borrower's company, provided that the conversion of any part of the debt into shares shall be notified to the borrower. The responsibility of the sale of the immovable property through process of a sale lies with the officer of the secured creditor. The bill also seeks to enable banks or any person to file a caveat so that before granting any stay, the bank or person is heard by the Debt Recovery Tribunal. All those financial institutions which have not been brought into the uh, embed of this particular act must have been brought because we have to maintain a uniformity so far as all banking institutions and the relation of the borrower, a borrower is concerned. The existing laws enable financial institutions to realize long-term assets manage problems of liquidity, assets liability mismatch and improve recovery by exercising powers to take possession of any securities. The existing law also empowers them to sell and reduce non-performing assets by adopting measures for recovery or reconstruction. The law also provides for setting up of asset reconstruction companies which are empowered to take possession of secured assets of the borrower. Institutionalizing and strengthening the securitization and reconstruction companies will bring in discipline in the process of recovering debts. Reserve Bank of India's 2009 summit also expressed the same thing to strengthen these companies. Now these companies will actually monitor and implement the fair and transparent process in recovering debts. Raj Kamal Rao, Rajya Sabha TV. Currently, banks are not, not empowered to accept any immovable property in realization of the claim against the default borrower in the situation where banks are unable to find a buyer for such assets. The bill proposes to empower banks and financial institutions to accept the immovable property in full or partial satisfaction of the bank's claim. My question to you, uh, Mr. Shekhar V. Uh, see, the first point that we brought out in this entire show, it was relating to borrowers' rights being compromised. Is Absolutely. that so? Absolutely, you are right. You see, in fact, earlier also, if you just trace the history, See, in 1993, we came out with the first act. See, probably an improvement, the, probably the government felt or the institutions felt, the financial institution felt that that was not seeing through the light. So they came out with this 2002, even though at that point of time, 
we said that it was a draconian measure which was being and in fact uh, the interests of the borrowers are not being protected mm -hmm. because there was always a grievance for the part of the borrowers. See, why do a borrower in fact borrow money? Because he is not able to have a liquidity in his. So he has to go and take it from the bank. And the main interest or of everybody is to grow. It mm -hmm. should not to scuttle the growth. Unfortunately, these 2002 Act as well as the amendment which is sought to be now brought in by this 2011 bill, which I hope by around 2012 this year will be brought into as an act. Mm. See, what exactly is, are we in fact allowing people to have a level playing field? Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, it is totally a one-sided affair, not being in the interest of the borrower, who are the prime people who are to play an equal role in, in the, the whole growth of this country. Absolutely. Now, I, that is fine, but there needs to be a little bit of protection as far as the lender is concerned. Absolutely. So, strengthening of the and recovery of debts, that is where we are stuck, actually. Because if you have a figure like 40 lakh crores, which is there, which is as good as bad debt with all the banks, which is as good as three times the budget of this country for three years, now, I'll bring in Mr. Uh, Rajesh Mohan Sinha. Mr. Sinha, the point is, borrower, yes, it goes against the borrower. But what is the big thing that this amendment actually does? You see, it appears, Prime FSI, the object of this amendment is to give more power to the bank to realize the money. Yes. Correct. Go down to it. <clears throat> Agree to it. You see, bank... This is, of course, correct that the borrowers are misusing, I mean, they are not paying the, 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 the loans in time and all that, and that is how this bank debt has been raising to any extent. My, my, my point is that when in Surface Act, specifically in which the amendment is going on, the ultimately the judge has been given, a judicial officer has been given jurisdiction to deal with it. I see give more power to the judicial officer to ensure instead of, I mean, to ensure first that there is a complete justice so that what Mr. Shekhar has said, that there is a possibility of borrower being, a borrower being uh, in trouble. This give more jurisdiction to the judges, to the judicial officer, so as to ensure the early recovery A and the possibility of the, 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 the borrower being, being, being harassed by the bank is also ruled out. Okay. So, I get it. Now, since that point is, I, I you, it, what, you, what you are trying to say is yes. that the judiciary, judiciary should be empowered and not the other way. You should, should not codify it and write it in so many words yes. that the borrower may, 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 may suffers. I just, yes. May I just add to it, if you just permit me. Yeah. Section 17 for the first time has been brought into existence in two, uh, 2002. Right. Which says that a judicial, I mean, if the aggrieved borrower goes to the court mm -hmm. and he can only go, aggrieved borrower can only go to the court when the action under section 13.4 is taken. Right. Meaning thereby, when the bank has already attached the goods yeah. or warrant of whereas, uh, attachment has already been issued. I say here that give more power what has been said in Supreme Court recently also. Okay. In so the, BS. And I, I hope this, uh, that this amendment must must consider the, ju the judgment of the Supreme Court when it has been said that even the issues prior to 13-4 order is passed because the only notice issue remains. Yes. So, this also can be taken into consideration by the judicial officer, uh -huh. that is the court. I say if you give the, this power to the bank, to the judicial Judiciary. officer, mm -hmm. then the apprehension of Mr. Shekhar also goes. Yeah. I mean, the apprehension yeah, of the yeah. borrower also goes. And here, the judge, the, the, the judicial officer is, is empowered more, I, 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 I say. To this. take on the uh, merits of the case. The merits of the case and decide quickly. So point that, taken. Point so, taken. So, that, so that the judicial officer will also be in this process of early recovery of loan. Right. Assuming, assuming. I get the point. I'll bring in right. Mr. Shekhar V. Very you. focused bill. It just targets the basic pith and substances that the institution which is lending, should be given avenues to recover. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. But it affects the borrower and the borrower's uh, rights according to what you've Absolutely. said. Right? Absolutely. And there's also a judgment 
which the goes to the extent of uh, safeguarding the interest. That's right. Here, what will actually happen if the lender's strength is enhanced? That is what I want to understand. See, I tell you one thing. The strike what will happen to the, what will the impact on the borrower? See, if you are talking in terms of what would be the effect of the borrower if this... On the borrower of this... Of this bill, proposed specific. bill, proposed yeah. bill. Virtually, it will be before even, see, a situation will arise. Borrower all the time, instead of ploughing the money which he has borrowed from the bank hmm. and... He would rather be always be running cautious to see that any time the democle sword of recovery is going to be on his head. So where is the question of there being a development in this country? Because you want the financial institution to help these people so that there can be a growth and what not. But unfortunately, if you are only interested in recovery of the money, see for a minute, let us try to understand. Even before this 93 Act, 2002 Act came, there, the banks were equally lending money. There is absolutely no difficulty. Instead of these specialized tribunals and courts which were appointed, there were the civil courts which were doing discharging their function. Mm -hmm. And there, nobody had a grievance. See, the only problem which arose was the time factor, the delay in the process of recovery. Mm -hmm. Probably when this 93 Act was brought in, what was there in the mind of the people or the government or at the instance of the financial institution? that these money, it's not merely the debt going waste or not being recovered. It's a question of how long this money is going to Keep be pending. brought. Pending and going to be brought back to the So kidney. what you're basically trying to, I'll sum it up, what you're basically trying to hint at is that it empowers the lender. Correct. Takes away rights from the borrower. That's right. And in a sense, reduces his risk-taking ability Absolutely. and compromises on growth. Absolutely. On that note, it's time for us to head into a break. When we come back, we will talk about registration of transactions of securitization. Welcome back. The bill proposes to provide for registration of transactions of securitization reconstruction in the central registry, which are subsisting on or before the establishment of central registry. The central, the central registry has retained, the central government has retained the right to exempt a class or classes of banks or financial institutions from the provision of this act on ground of public interest. According to the Department of Banking Supervision in Reserve Bank, the gross non-performing assets of all commercial banks is a way above 90,000 crore rupees. This is equivalent to one year's estimate of government spending on food security. The government intends to make this value recoverable so that liquidity condition of banks is healthier. In the registrar office, sub registrar office, there is no mention of equitable mortgage as well. Even though it's a registered mortgage, uh, you go to the registrar office and you cannot find whether this property is mortgage or not or not. The bill seeks to increase the period of response by the bank to a borrower's representation from existing 7 days to 15 days. The bill permits multi-state cooperative banks to recover debts that are due before or after the commencement of the proposed legislation. It enables banks and financial institutions to enter into settlement with the borrower. And for acknowledging the settlement, debts recovery tribunal is empowered to pass an order. The bill also provides that the recovery proceedings pending in relation to recovery of debts due to any multi-state cooperative banks before this act comes into force shall continue in a manner as if such amendments had not come into force. In Surface Act, there is a provision of that is section 17 where right to appeal has been given to the borrower. Now this appeal is very limited. It is limited in the sense that you can prefer an appeal or a borrower can prefer an appeal only an action under section 13.4 is taken, which is precisely wrong. The bill seeks to give powers to the central government to extend the time for filing of such transaction with the central registry. The bill will not prejudice any rights acquired in respect of the property concerned or financial asset before the transaction is actually registered. Conversion of non-performing assets of the major industrial companies in India is accepted and appreciated by all the banks. But the major financial sector is concerned about not amending 
the Sikh Industries and Companies Act, which actually strengthens the financial status of these major companies. Raj Kamal Rao, Rajya Sabha TV. The bill also provides that the recovery proceedings pending in relation to recovery of debts due to any multi-state cooperative banks before this act comes into force shall continue in a manner as if such amendments had not come into force, which basically protects the uh, multi-state uh, uh, cooperative banks. But the point I wanted to ask you was, Sir. you were making a point on the 13th four bit. Mm -hmm. I want you to explain that issue. Aspect clearly, how do you say that the borrower's appeal is affected? May I, may I just explain yeah. it to you? When this act for the first time came before the Honorable Supreme Court, when the validity was challenged, the Supreme Court has said that this act is a bit harsh, mm -hmm. though it was not uh, declared to be unconstitutional. Now, thereafter, the judgments came. Now, what has happened in 13.4, first of all, the, if there is a default, mm -hmm. the bank can issue a notice. Mm -hmm. And after issuing a notice, bank can take the action under section 13.4. Mm -hmm. Now, I am just making a mention here. When the bank issues a notice and the borrower replies to it, then there is a reasoned order which is to be provided in the act to be passed by the bank. But simultaneously, there is a provision added to it that so far as these reasons are given, no appeal is preferred, no appeal is provided to the borrower. So the reason given, no use, no power. If you want, I can read, this is 13.4 proviso, and then this proviso has been added in section 17 also, where right to appeal is provided. Mm -hmm. Now caveat has also been put into it. Mm. So what is there is that in section 17, if you are going, a, you cannot go against the reasons given by the uh, bank, by, by, by the bank, bank on their show cost notice and by replying to it. Oh, so okay. that cannot be appealed. A, what can be appealed? That action taken under section 13.4, that is they say that I have recovered your, I have taken possession of your asset. asset. Only then you can prevent an appeal. And that also with a caveat. And that okay. also with a caveat to the bank. I'm sorry. Yeah. And one more thing. See, this is this is very good uh, here to understand this. The right to caveat has not been given to the borrower when a bank is straightway going to the judicial magistrate to, to get a warrant. Okay. Here is the warrant. The, here the caveat has not been given. Why the caveat should have been given? I am absolutely with Mr. Shekhar. Mm -hmm. I am absolutely with the with this act also. Yes, speedy recovery is required. I definitely want that the bank should recover the amount as early as possible. But this act says what? If there is one or two default in a loan which has been taken for 10 years or for 20 years, you see the entire amount is recoverable at once, meaning thereby you are, you are absolutely made it clear that we will sell your property if there is one or two default. What is this? On and default that, also? Yes. See Only now, one or two words, it looks, Mr. The whole thing looks like a yes. farce to me. So it the whole thing looks like a farce. But I'll, I'll put the whole thing around to you. Yes. I understand it has been done to facilitate the yes. institutions and to uh, bring in more liquidity, make, make more, make more, borrowing more easy, make liquidity available to banks so that they can expand more. Bank I understand. My point is, my point to you is the other side of the story. Right. What is wrong? Yes. If there is a threat on the entrepreneur who has taken money, yes. borrowed money, yes. is not disciplined, yes. hmm, and there is, ha is a threat of this kind, you think this threat is too much for any entrepreneur to take or should it be balanced out? What should be done? See, balanced is the perfect answer, but I'll just, to answer your query, I'll just take you to a live demonstration of a, of a case which we had an occasion to handle. A bank, I won't name the bank, I won't name the person who borrowed the money. It was a complete running factory around Delhi that was declared as an NPA. For what good reason, we do not know, mm. nor even the reason which was supposed to be indicated, as rightly pointed out, my, it, the, it's not there. Mm. You have no right of challenging, you have no right of filing an appeal against mm. those things. Then ultimately, when a conclusion is already arrived, the bank does, and pursuant to that conclusion, the bank acts by taking over your property. At that time, you are told, please go and file your whatever uh, you want to do okay. it, and then there is a caveat again. You are not able to take an order to tell that what has been done, the reasoning which follows is all absolutely, it's all 
very so what according to you must go i am saying yes. what is must go in order to make it balanced and in favor of the borrower as well i will only put it in a in 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 one word see as the borrowers need to be disciplined i totally agree with you on that i agree with the finance minister that borrowers and one thing you must realize all the borrowers are not of the same character but unfortunately the mindset of the institution is that once somebody borrows the money probably they look as if he has committed a big crime mm. and they are always after him see it is bound to happen because of the economic factors the man may not be able to pay the loan maybe one installment two installment it always happens mm -hmm. even sometime the electricity dues we don't pay in time yeah, we yeah. are asked to pay some surcharge mm -hmm. there should be some proviso like asking them if you don't pay it in time you will have to pay some penal yeah. interest for that mm -hmm. period instead of that that's already there we pay that's right mm -hmm. but instead of that what they do here they declare you as an npa and straight away come and take your running factory and close your business business and close what your business this? i put it to i put it to I, I, let me add to it let me add to it assuming the you have, you have sold the property you have sold the residence and you have taken the money to the bank once again the bank will reloan it yeah or yeah, not yeah. or will keep it with them no 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 they they will give it to the other side that's their job other other side will also they, they will fetch interest so what is the problem i get it i you get see, it you 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 just note this i get what it what is the problem on that note it's time for us to head into a break when we come back we will show you an interview with advocate samir parik Welcome back. My colleague Raj Kamal Rao spoke to Samir Parik, advocate in the Supreme Court, and tried to get a perspective. Tell us how the banks are going to benefit from these amendments and how they are going to use these particular kinds of amendments to implement and to recover the NPAs. In this bill, there are two major uh, issues that they are taking uh, care of. Uh, these issues are permitting uh, the uh, asset reconstruction companies and the securitization companies to convert the loans which are there, which they have bought over. into equity of the company so that's one of the major amendments that it is proposing the second major amendment is at present banks and financial institutions are not allowed to take over the asset of the company and they only allowed to sell the same and if there are no buyers for the asset then the bank has a, a, a difficult position where they don't know what to do so with this amendment the banks can take over the assets of the company and use that to pay off the loans thereby re reducing their npas so from the borrower's point of view what is your take on the amendments that are given in this bill uh, are they in favor of the borrower or are they trying to make lot of change in the earlier acts the amendments i think are useful for the borrowers also the key of the is key issue that will arise would be whether uh, what, what is the valuation that uh, is put on these two things that is converting the loan into equity or taking over the assets of the uh, company Now, if the borrower's asset is valued very low, or the equity when uh, you convert it into equity, the equity is valued very low, then it's not good for the borrower, of course. So, from a legal expertise point of view, uh, what is what is the expectation uh, from the government for the better functioning of banks and the borrowers? Really speaking, the 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 issues that arise here are, as you rightly said, balancing the interest of the borrower and uh, balancing the interest of the uh, banks. and in this uh, as you know rbi statistics show that uh, in 2011 94000 crores uh, of amounts have become npa so it is very important to help the banks but at the same time there is another law which tends to be misused by the borrowers which is the sick industrial companies act uh, uh, so uh, so any company which doesn't want to pay the banks etc they go and file uh, an application before the bif or the board of industrial and financial reconstruction and the moment such an application is filed the banks cannot recover monies from them okay. so again if you can in fact strengthen sika provisions in a manner mm -hmm. that in a very short time bound manner all action uh, actions are taken by the bifr mm -hmm. and aifr mm -hmm. that will really help the banks more than these provisions the bill also seeks to permit multi state cooperative banks with respect to debt due 
before or after the commencement of the proposed legislation to opt to initiate proceedings either under the Multi-State Cooperative Societies Act or under the Debt Recovery Tribunal. Quickly, sir, Mr. Um, uh, Shekhar V, the point you were making about the NPA application, actually before declaring a property an NPA, how do you think, what is the process? And that's a very crucial process. Absolutely. How do you want, I mean, should it be with the judiciary or should it continue the way it is? See, it's like this. As far as declaring somebody as an NPA, see, we have no difficulty because the bank being the lender of the money, it has to take the shot. There is no difficulty. But what we are, in fact, insisting and rather persisting is whatever the opinion which the bank takes, that is within their purview, that needs to be tested by some judicial process. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, where is the rule of law? Mm -hmm. How is the judicial process being prevented here? How is the yeah, judiciary yeah, being yeah, prevented? Yes, as I have told you <coughs> earlier also, there is a provision that bank shall issue a notice containing all the reasons declaring him to be NBA. Thereafter, a time is given. 13 for again. 13 for again. Time is given to the borrower. I get it. Yes, to reply it. Very good. But it is just a showpiece. That's all. Mm -hmm. Because when, the, when the, there is a direction to pass a reasoned order, this reasoned order cannot be appealed. What I say is that this reason, whenever bank passes a reason order... Can you use what Mr. Shekhar so was Mr. using as an anomaly uh, that a yes, Kangaru cor and a cor police? Correct, correct. If correct, you can bring correct. that... So into. I am just adding to what Mr. Shekhar has said. I say whatever reasons bank consider it to be fit to declare a person as NPA. Very good. This, this declaration by the bank Should be tested deserves by the judiciary. to be tested by the judiciary once that's all. Uh, you, and the comparison that you were making, I want to bring that out so that it is understood by everyone. The comparison that you made with the police thing. Yeah, I repeat. tell you what exactly. <laughs> it is like, suppose a, a thief is caught in the marketplace, he yes. is brought to the police station mm -hmm. and the police tries and holds a kangaroo court mm -hmm. and holds him guilty. Mm -hmm. And for enforcement of that, what finding they have, they go to the court and say, please punish him. I think this will be total mockery of the whole system. Right. On and that note. Be, one, one more thing. Only one more thing. There should be a caveat also when the bank is going to the magistrate to get a warrant. Okay. This okay. caveat must be given to the borrower. borrower. Absolutely. I agree. Right. I agree. Okay. That, should, that is your proposal. Right. Because the object of the act is, of course, this See, the whole speedy recovery of the money. And the each judicial officer wants, each judicial officer knows that the object of the act is the speedy See, recovery. Let me, let right. me tell you, just, uh, just how, yeah, very quickly I'll tell. The, the bill is a very laudable object. Mm. I'm not saying for yes. a minute yeah, yeah. That, that the money which is meant, it's all taxpayers' yes, money. Yes, yes, yes. It should not be mm. wasted. But at the same time, you see, the gentleman who borrows the money, he also has certain right. Mm -hmm. And it is for the court to test it. Yes. Who the hell are you to test it? Right. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir, for joining us Thank on the show, uh, on this discussion. It's time for us to end the show. You can email your suggestions and comments to law.rstv at gmail.com. You can also watch our shows on the YouTube. We'll be back with a new issue and a new episode. Keep watching Raj Sabha TV.